This time is a calling when we're forced to see the truth or harvest of who we are now, where we have been, and to see where we're headed. So it takes guts, takes courage and bravery to look at that, and also to open up and to embrace this coming season of life. We can come into right relationship with our cyclical nature and our inner wild feminine power to find balance. And so we can let go of all that's holding us back, that's silencing us, what's dragging us down, keeping us small, and what's ripping us further apart from our true nature. Welcome to the Wildflow Podcast with me, Charlotte Puanto, an award-winning menstrual cycle coach and priestess and the founder of First Moon Circle School. I guide women to honor and embrace their sacred cycles in their life, leadership, and business. Let's say hi to more ease and flow by co-creating with your body and goodbye to struggle and burnout. This podcast features soul-enriching conversations, inspiring you to love your cycle, lead as a sacred leader, and grow a life and business that serves you by harnessing cyclical life and business practices. Join me and other change makers, thought leaders, and wise women to embrace and embody your wild flow. Hey, welcome to Wild Flow with me, Charlotte. It's lovely to have you here. So let's just take a moment before we dive into this episode all about autumn and the uh, premenstrual phase and PMS and the menopause transition and how autumn equinox is a mirror of all of these places in the cycles. So let's just take a moment to drop into our own bodies and our own cycles and see where we're at. So just breathing in with me wherever you are, wherever you're listening. Taking those breaths, dropping down into your body and softening. And letting your awareness land within your body, deep into your pelvic bowl, around your womb space, and just notice if you have a menstrual cycle, just notice whereabouts in that cycle you are right now. You might know the day exactly. You might know whereabouts-ish. You might just know which week or even which half of your cycle, and that's fine. You might not have any idea actually and have to really stop and think about it. All good, no pressure. Just feel into how you feel today. What is alive for you? What are the feelings that you're feeling? Sensations in your body? What's your energy level? And what have your thoughts been like today? Positive, optimistic, negative, wobbly, solid, unsure, expansive, resilient, or a bit crumbly, whatever it is. It's acknowledging with no judgment, not labeling, and welcoming all of yourself today. The parts that you call good, the parts that you feel bad about. Just letting go of all those labels and loving on all of you, welcoming all of you, all parts of you. Just take a moment to give great thanks to you and yourself and your body. (sighs) So as I record this, I'm Sacred Day 10. And I'm in my spring and I'm feeling like my body has lots of energy to do. I feel like I could very easily do, 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 uh, and forget to eat lunch, forget to, um, go to the toilet. Even at this sort of time in my cycle, it's like, I could just push on through, like just barricading myself, um, into yeah big work big energy big getting all the things done and just overriding myself entirely I actually feel a bit tired as well though in my brain and um yeah I've not had as much sleep over the last few days I was solo parenting for 
four nights um and i had children up in the night and you know they're always up early and um yeah i just feel a bit tired and i really know that at this point in my cycle if i don't slow down and take stock and nurture myself come my autumn time of this cycle i will be cranky and exhausted um not a happy camper so it's all in how I manage my springtime. This is the time when I can really um, screw myself over for the rest of my cycle. So I do have to be careful. Hmm. So how about you? Where are you at? What are you feeling? What do you need? And from that place, let's dive into this episode. So this week, we have got the autumn equinox here in the Southern Hemisphere. So Thursday, 21st of March is officially equinox. And equinox, if you don't know, equi is equal and nox is night in Latin. So it's the balance of day and night, uh, the balance of light and dark. So the days are as long as the nights are. But from that point onwards, the nights are start going to start being longer than the days. So in the Northern Hemisphere, just to say, it's actually the spring equinox. So obviously the opposite side and um, equinox there being the point of, of equal day and night. And it's the tipping point from having longer nights to having longer days. And I'm sure that's very welcome in the Northern Hemisphere. And here in the Southern Hemisphere, we're at that point where... The sun crosses the celestial equator, and that is what causes this equal um, day length. And in the traditional or what's known as the pagan um, wheel of the year, this point is one of the eight um, traditional points around the wheel, around the year, that were agricultural um milestones and markers really but just they're observed by people who honor the seasons and the cycles uh this point is called mabon or mabon as 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 it's sometimes said mabon is the second harvest festival of the uh year uh, after la mass um which was at the start of february in the southern hemisphere at the at the end of summer so now as we reach mabon it is the second harvest. And when we consider the great cycle of all things that all our, uh, our other cycles come from. So the great cycle is, um, it starts with with birth and then it's growth, growth, full bloom, harvest, decay and death. And so we're at that decay stage now. So we're nearly at the end of the cycle. And of course, this is not the annual cycle, but the solar cycle. So in the Southern Hemisphere, the solar cycle and the annual cycle do not line up. In the Northern Hemisphere, they do because um, the end of the growth cycle at, at that decay death point is, is deep winter, which is December, January. So we are a little bit out of balance here when following the cyclical uh, seasonal rhythm, it doesn't line up with the year. So there's always that tension. So we're now at the decay stage, as I say, and then the death phase, the death stage comes at Samhain, which is like Halloween, and that in the Southern Hemisphere is the end of April, the start of May. And in the Southern Hemisphere, the growth cycle um, here is where the, the rebirth point is at winter solstice. So that's actually the very point of rebirth, um, not necessarily the death. So death comes next, we're at decay now. And it's really beautiful. I live in the um, countryside of the Southern Highlands, which is between Sydney and Canberra. It's a rural area. And I live in a small village. And every day uh, we drive to the town about 25 minutes away. And then we come home. And that's to take children to school or to go to the shops, to do anything really. And to come home, we have to drive uh, across um, across the countryside past fields and there's farms everywhere. So we've got cattle um, everywhere. Um, there's horses around. There's some sheep. There's not really pigs around here. Um, but there's lots and lots of um, crops being grown in the fields. And so right now, 
I just noticed that about a week ago, um, suddenly there were hay bales absolutely everywhere. And so all the farmers have been, uh, you know, cutting um, and, and bundling up the hay and packaging it up. And it is just, you've got all these huge hay bales scattered around the fields at the minute. And it, that's, that's what's going on. It's the time of harvest. So it won't be long now before temperatures really plummet and the frosts will come here. We do get frosts, we get thick frosts. And so it's time to gather the summer crops and bed down in the garden as well. Make sure you've got um, all of the summer crops out and uh, the autumn and winter veggies in. It's about harvesting now preserving the food to see ourselves through winter so again going back to that sustainability piece where I mentioned in my in my cycle check-in that I'm in spring if I burn out now it's like if I don't if I eat all the food now or don't um, think about how to preserve these crops and the harvest to see me all the way through winter that's when we really get stuck Um, that's where our, our energy runs out and we we burn out we get ourselves into trouble so there's that real link here so now at maybon it's about harvesting preserving sustaining bedding down not thinking about um growing or you know uh, putting in anything that's going to wither over winter it's about celebrating and sharing in the abundance of food and all that is plenty as well it's about gathering around the table, sharing with community, giving the surplus to those in need. It's about really rejoicing in the abundance, all that we have, giving great thanks. And around this sort of time in the equivalent Northern Hemisphere is when they have Thanksgiving. So it's all linked. And the Greek goddess Demeter, if you know of of the story of Persephone, Demeter is her mother and Demeter is closely associated with the autumn harvest because it was her grief at losing Persephone who was her maiden daughter that turned the earth from the lush abundance of a perpetual summer to the barren cold and the infertile lands of winter uh, when she was stolen by Hades who was the god of the underworld to be his bride and in that story uh, in the Lusinian mysteries, Persephone ends up being able to live in the middle realm on earth with her mother for six months of the year, um, representing the warmer, lighter months. So from uh, spring equinox to autumn equinox, but then she has to go underground and under, to back to the underworld to live with Hades as his queen. And that represents those six darker months. So from autumn equinox to the spring equinox. So autumn equinox represents Persephone leaving the earth to retreat to the underworld. And there's great debate about whether she went willingly or not. And I think this is the key, the crux of how we can embrace autumn and our inner shadows, our own descent, and our own fears, rage, grief, denial, and power that we've been disconnected from and how this comes up for us in the corresponding menstrual and life cycle with autumn. And so this is where it gets really juicy in my eyes. So as the wheel of the year comes to an end, Maybon is a really good time to set intentions that involve um, decreasing, slowing down and reducing what's not working for us. And that might mean um, ending bad relationships or unhealthy habits. It might mean putting loving boundaries in place It might mean doing the inner work to look at where we're holding ourselves back or being flummoxed, that's a good word, isn't it, by self-destructive beliefs. And I think about um, what's holding us back. So what we are allowing to hold us back and also what's unconsciously holding us back. And so, you know, when we think about these associations with the other cycles, if autumn equinox is associated with the premenstrual time of the menstrual cycle and then the menopause transition, these are both that time where we um, leave the bright, higher outward energy um, when it's time when we've been giving more and when we've really welcomed and accepted and loved and valued, um, rejoiced in the prime of our lives 
So whether that be ovulation or the mother time when we are cycling in our fertile years before we reach menopause. And so at these points, when we leave those parts of our cycles and move into the premenstrual phase or the perimenopause, menopause initiation, that we've got to let go. We have to prepare to descend into those times of life that are spoken about with public disdain and fear. And it causes a lot of dread. It's it's a bit like as well when we are young and we hear horror stories about what it's like to have our first period. Maybe we haven't had our first period yet and we've already got that dread and anxiety because we hear all those stories. It's it's really, it, it, you know, there's, there's threads of that that pull through to this part of our cycle. Again, if our first bleed is the spring of our life, And our last bleed is the autumn of our life. Again, going back to what I was sharing in my own cycle check-in about the links between summer um, preparation, how we enjoy some uh, spring, sorry, and how we experience autumn. All so interconnected. I just love it. So maybe you're thinking, I hate the dark and cold of autumn and winter. Boo, can't it just always be summer? I hate how I feel when I'm premenstrual. I get PMS, rage, grief, no energy, whatever it is, and I just hate it. Can I skip this part of my cycle? Or maybe menopause is horrible. I am hating either, you know, being in in perimenopause. Um, I feel terrible. I feel invisible. I hate these hot flushes. I wish it would end. These are just some examples, but they are clues the clues for how we can reclaim the medicine and sheer power of these descent phases of the cycles lie in how we approach autumn. This time is a calling when we're forced to see the truth or harvest of who we are now, where we have been, and to see where we're headed. So it takes guts, takes courage and bravery to look at that and also to open up and to embrace this coming season of life. We can come into right relationship with our cyclical nature and our inner wild feminine power to find balance. And so we can let go of all that's holding us back, that's silencing us, what's dragging us down, keeping us small, and what's ripping us further apart from our true nature. So just take a moment now, I'd like to ask you, how do you feel about autumn? Do you live somewhere that you do have autumn and do you enjoy it or do you resent it? Or do you avoid it altogether by chasing the sun? Or are you living somewhere like the tropics where there's no autumn? What's your relationship to autumn? And then your premenstrual time. Do you like or loathe it? Why? What comes up for you? How do you feel at that time? What fears come up? Where do you lose a grip on yourself and your life? Where are you out of balance? If PMS is associated with the premenstrual time, it's it's important to know it's actually a collection of symptoms that manifest from not honoring our descent energy, that waning energy, and from trying to be in a perpetual summer season. And that level of overriding your body just leads to stress and burnout. And it affects your hormones, even if you can't feel it or aren't really aware of it you're putting stress on your body if you're trying to live in a perpetual summer so balance is key like the equal day and night balance autumn is for slowing down and if you're around the perimenopause portal coming closer to menopause how are you feeling and treating it with dread reticence resistance denial grief or are you embracing each hot flush and foggy memory moment as a step closer in the distillation process of your truth and your power. Just go back to that Native American saying that has become really well known um, in in the uh, menstrual cycle realm particularly about how a girl meets her power at her first bleed. She practices her power over her menstrual cycle years So with each bleed, she practices, and then at her last bleed, she becomes her power. Just love that. So autumn equinox and these times of life, the menstrual, premenstrual time and perimenopause are all about slowing 
refining, sifting out the muck to leave the harvest and finding the gold underneath. What's holding you back? Where are you denying this much needed essential part of the cycle and this much needed essential and highly valuable part of you? Hey, have you discovered your sacred cyclical leadership style yet? Take my juicy free archetype quiz to discover your primary style as she shows up in you and in the way you create, lead and share your big magic in the world. By taking the quiz, you receive an in-depth juicy playbook featuring a full breakdown of how the archetype lives in you and tips, tools and strategies to expand your archetypal gifts, nourish your vulnerabilities and come to balance so you can lead, grow and serve at your highest potential. Understand how your archetype is linked to your menstrual cycle and the seasons of life and business. And ultimately, have so much fun taking this magic mirror quiz. Go to charlottepuanto.com slash quiz. And in case you're wondering, mine is the mystic. How about you? I'd love to know which result you get. So as you've been listening to all of this and just soaking it in and reflecting on the dots that you might be um connecting in your mind and your awareness about these different seasons, uh, the, sorry, the same season, but of different cycles. Are you starting to become aware of, of where you maybe are out of balance and how to really honor this time of the year as we reach autumn and how you can perhaps change the way that you are living, change the way that you're approaching yourself, your life, your personal spiritual practice and your business as well. Um, So many different realms that all of this wisdom applies to. So I'd love to share some tips with you to help you to welcome autumn, whether you're in autumn, you're outer autumn or both because they are reflecting in each other. So get outside, dress suitably, breathe in the cooler air, Feel the temperature of it in your chest. Absorb the golden light. I just love the golden light of autumn and winter. Admire the changing landscape around you. Perhaps there are leaves coloring gold and oranges and plums where you live. And if so, as they drop, as they crisp, collect some, gather them, place them on your altar. My children at school, they make autumn crowns of uh, of leaves at the harvest festival which isn't too far away now and I just love that festival so much take a moment to have deep gratitude for all that summer has brought to you so if you're feeling a reticence about leaving summer remember the good times and just notice how you feel about leaving it behind I think of that um Lana Del Rey song summertime sadness where it reminds me of like you know, you've had this amazing holiday. You might have even had a little summer flirtation. Um, all those good times. It's like Greece as well. And um, the movie, that is. You've had all of these, yeah, this beautiful time uh, of summer. And now it's time to, to say goodbye. So summertime sadness. Um, if you're feeling like that, like just give real thanks for all that has been. And if you're feeling reluctant to embrace autumn like I certainly have been this time this year which is not usual for me but I really have because I did have a really good summer then just notice that give thanks if you didn't feel like you had the best summer that you desired that you had been dreaming about just welcome the disappointment not trying to gaslight ourselves just feel it feel the disappointment and remember that summer always comes back around next cycle Consider how you might enjoy it differently. When it comes, what might you do next time to really take advantage of it? Perhaps you're feeling absolutely bloody knackered after a really, really busy summer and you're like, thank God. (laughs) Thank God. Now I don't have to be so extroverted. Um, The social calendar might slow down a bit. Um, More time for cozying up and being inwards. And um, if you're introverted, you might be thinking, yes, like this is my season. If you're extroverted, you might be thinking the opposite. So just noticing. Ah, So take stock of where you're at in your life. Are you where you thought you'd be? Are you where you want to be? 
what are your expectations versus reality? Because this can be often really revealing and it can give clues about where resistance or worries are coming up about slowing down for winter. Um, especially when we consider the life cycle, like, like the broader sense, like are you where you thought you would be at this time of your life? No matter how old you are, no matter what your situation, I do think autumn can bring this up because again, all things are so interconnected. And just be with yourself. Give thanks for yourself. Appreciate where you're at. Celebrate all the gifts that you do have. Do your own inner personal version of celebrating the abundance and share the harvest. Consider autumn and winter as time to refine yourself. So what have you harvested this solar cycle since last winter? What have you achieved? What's gone well? Who have you become? What what growth have you been working on? What have you called into your life? What have you created? What's not working too? Where are you needing to let go of? Just look at it, take stock. You don't need all the answers right now, but set time, headspace, and energy aside to reflect on this over um, this, this autumn time. Journaling is my favorite autumn and premenstrual practice, especially. I tend to forget about it during spring. Um, I do in early spring, but like late spring, summer, I really don't do any journaling. And I often think to myself, when I pick my journal up again in autumn, oh my gosh, they did it again. It's because I'm busy being outwards in the world and creating. But come autumn, I'm like, give me space. I need to take stock. I need to just check in with myself. Like this is super important. And I find I naturally want to do that, but it's also really important because it's the end. We need to do that refining and uh, evaluation and we need to really hold space for ourselves and our feelings. I like to journal to flesh out everything that I'm feeling and often can't make sense of my scrambled thoughts. Um, So journaling helps that. I get out all the feelings, all the disappointments. Um, And I sit with all of those and journaling helps me make a lot of sense of them in ways that uh, talking it through can, but uh, I find just when I'm journaling, I get to be more authentically true. I might not say everything or my full truth to somebody else Um, and thinking, no, can't, doesn't work. (laughs) I get way too distracted and I don't get to really take the time to anchor down those thoughts thinking from, I just don't think, uh, is anywhere near as effective as journaling. Journaling slows your brain down um, and it helps you to really get deeper, get beneath, 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 rather than flitting off into different directions and tangents. So journaling. I find that on the other side of this, I can find such a relief, space, clarity, and fresh hope. So you might also change your schedule up. You might take some more intentional downtime over the next few months. You might start saying no to to things, to invitations a bit more. You might be feeling that real burnout um, after the busy summer. You might just be really craving quiet time, family time, solo time. That's so normal and it's so important. This is essential to not burn yourself out. Think of it as like the breaks are now going on. So how can you change up your social schedule? your work schedule, how might just, how might things change? So have a celebration, perhaps before we really slow down to share that bounty. So uh, we might gather one last time. We might go to circle and I love holding a a women's circle and I am holding a women's circle for, for all of these eight points of the year. But the autumn equinox, it's really about slowing down. It's all of this wisdom, holding space for all of this, whatever celebration means to you, dinner with girlfriends, um, a little moment to light a candle with your family, whatever it is, just share in the abundance of food, Um, give thanks for the summer that has been and, and the harvest that has been. And then as autumn begins, it's time to welcome your witchy side. So autumn and leading up to Samhain especially, which is in in another seven weeks or so, um, is the season of the witch. Your truth, your strength, your resilience, your inner mystic, 
and your intuitive side all want to shine through. And this is true in perimenopause and in the premenstrual phase. Play with candles, gather herbs from your garden and make smoking wands and dry them to make incenses. Consult your tarot for guidance. Do some womb journeying. Do some movement. Do some meditation. I find that really embracing your inner knowing is incredibly potent. I love to dance and move as well and use my voice to let energy move. There's nothing more potent than than opening your mouth and letting your body sound itself. And I really love my Inner Autumn Sorceress playlist that I've made. And it's free for anyone to listen to on Spotify. I've curated it intentionally to have some deeper sounds, some bass, um, like real kind of like some of it's like stomping music and kind of like it's not pretty and airy fairy and it's not sensual like my summer playlist. This one is like earthy and primal and it's got some world sounds in there and it's it's powerful music. And I find that it really helps me to shift some big feelings and stuck energy at this time of the cycle. So whether I just play it on my headphones or I put it on while I'm driving or I play it in my lounge and I do some real like rah dancing and moving and growling and whatever it is, I love listening to it while I'm exercising at that time of my cycle too. I find it really helps me to like push on, um, sort of do like power, uh, like strength work um or uh if I'm like on my exercise bike and I'm doing more of like a like resistance work for example that music just helps me to like uh hold that energy and to release the energy and not to back down um so I just love having music like that maybe you have music like that too you've got music that you just really love at that time and the last one I've got here is to embrace your inner challenger So if you have taken my quiz and particularly if you did get the result of the challenger, you'll have seen that this archetype, because you get a free, that free book, if you're the challenger, you've seen that she is an activist, a warrior woman. Uh, She's fierce, but she's in right relationship with her voice and power. And she seeks to do good for others and not just for herself. She speaks up for those who can't. She expresses her truth and holds tight boundaries from a place of love and not from fear and scarcity. So the inner challenger comes out in our autumn. She's like the enchantress in some ways. Um, that she's how she shows up in the way that we lead. She can show up in the way that we do business. She can show up in the way we do mothering, the way we relate to who we are in the world. So the challenger um is really an invitation to be in right relationship with all that power and and to heal our PMS so that it's not destructive and just burns everything down, but actually allows us healing because we can bring that ferocity, but channel it for good and for the collective good as well. So if you want to learn more about the challenger, the first thing is go take the quiz because she might be your result. But if she's not your result, then I've got a class. It's, It's $50. It's super, super cheap. And it's called Your Cycle, Your Biz Superpower. And it breaks down all of these archetypes and it's packed with tips and strategies and gives the inner work required to be in your healthy challenger energy. And it's about how you can bring that in your life and through your business or your creativity or your leadership. So that's always there for you too. Um, So they're my tips uh, to help you get started with autumn. And I just really invite you to reframe it instead of it being, oh no. Um, I've got, you know, what does it, whatever, whatever you tell yourself, this means reframe it into a time of beauty and admiration for the magic and the beauty of the changing scenery around you and within you. Let this be a time to take stock. Let this time to willingly go into your own underworld and not necessarily the full depths of what we mean when we say like an underworld journey like a dark night of the soul but just to welcome our wilderness to reclaim and embrace and love give thanks to those parts of us we might have hidden or we don't have such a strong relationship with this is really the call to look inwards and to notice where we um, are disconnected from ourselves and to do a lot of that work around what's holding us back 
looking at those fears, those beliefs, where we keep ourselves small, to do the mindset work, to do the energetic work, to look at the strategies we need to help us to be more of ourselves, to, to bring our, our full power through. And again, your cycle, your this superpower gives you lots and lots of ways to actually do this. Lots of the mindset work on how to, um, yeah, come into that right relationship and that powerful, um, centered, grounded, rooted, uh, but yet fiery, uh, transformational place in our autumn. So I hope you have a beautiful autumn and thank you for being with me until next time. Lots of love. Thanks so much for listening to Wild Flow. I love having you here and hope you loved this episode. If you did, please show your love by leaving a rating and review and share your fave episodes with your cycle and biz sisters and those who haven't yet discovered the power of their body and cycle. This is how we collectively create change and heal the sisterhood. It makes such a difference. Thank you for sharing. Haven't discovered your cyclical leadership style yet? Take my free much love quiz now to receive your free in-depth playbook on how to up your sacred leadership, grow your business and thrive by embodying your cyclical archetype. Go to charlottepronto.com slash quiz now. Until next time, be devoted to your body as guide and your cycle as oracle.